Hi everyone, I mean Harvey Massage Therapist. This is Jess. And today I'm going to be talking about how to work on a client who is fully clothed. This is something that might come up if you choose to go to an office setting and maybe you don't have a massage chair or maybe you just prefer to work on a table. And so you bring your table and uh, you just work on fully clothed office workers. That's a great way of doing it. Uh, this might also come into play if you are giving a massage, you, you tell someone to undress to their comfort level, and this is their comfort level. And a lot of this can also apply when you're working at, say, a sporting event, when you're working on fully clothed people. Uh, in those places, you might be doing a more kinetic um, massage, one with more stretching and stuff like that. And that's a little bit different from what I'm going to be showing today. If you'd like to see a routine that I do that involves more stretching, you can click down in the description. So when I'm working with a fully clothed client, I do steal a lot from what I know about chair massage. So I'm going to be not doing a lot of gliding over clothes. There is definitely a place for that and you can use the friction to create some heat and you can definitely introduce movement that way. But I like to take some of the lessons from uh, chair massage and some of the lessons from myofascial release and apply them to this environment where you can't really glide, not the same way that you can with bare skin. And I usually start kind of like this, very gently and gradually walking my way down the back and then back up. This is kind of similar to how I start a standard massage. I move slowly, I make my contact gradually. And I want to begin by telling the story of this entire back. So just like with chair massage, I'm sinking in and allowing my hands to travel. I'm displacing the skin over the underlying tissue. This is creating some fascial traction that is actually a little bit harder to do when I've got oil on my hands. So this is a good opportunity to create that movement, that mobilization of the superficial tissue over the underlying tissue and of the bones of the spine. And notice that I'm moving slowly. Unlike a 15 minute chair massage or a five minute post-event sports massage, I want to bring in the general feel of a table massage. And to me that means slowly introducing myself. It means working with the three-dimensionality of the body. And it means going at a measured pace, at a slower pace. I want to give just as much consideration during this massage as I would during a standard massage with oil. And next I'll do what I always do, which is come over to one side and I will switch up my tools. I don't want to spend the entire time using the palmer surfaces of my hands like this. So I'll switch over to my soft fist. I will be sinking in a bit with these metacarpophalangeal joints, but I also want to spread some of that pressure to these proximal dorsal phalanges. So I've got my fist sinking in just a bit. I'm displacing tissue down toward her tailbone. I'm, I'm not allowing myself to just sink toward the table, I still want to keep that myofascial angle. And I can go up and down the spine like that. 
This other hand is acting as the mother hand. It's applying broad, comforting contact, and it's taking some of my weight for me, which I like. It allows me to easily stand up from these moves, and it allows me to modulate the amount of pressure that I'm giving with this other tool. Something nice about clothed massage is that you always have perfect attraction. You never have to worry about how much oil you have applied. You always just stick right to that most superficial tissue. And so this is a great opportunity to take this superficial tissue and take it for a ride. So I can take this uh, spinal erector tissue and draw it gently outward. So right now I'm thinking this way. I'm thinking out laterally. An easy way of kind of simulating that same gliding sensation that you would get from a standard massage is to just rock your own body weight from hand to hand and gently walk your way to different parts of the body. Never feel like you need to pull your own body weight up using your back as a crane. If you're not able to give a lot of body weight to your client, you can either get further over your client and deeper into your stance. This will give less of your body weight to the client. Or you can have one hand in a place that can take more pressure while you're using the other hand to work in a place that isn't able to take as much pressure. And you can always use one hand to stabilize yourself on the table. So here I'm able to sink as much pressure as I want into the table instead of giving it to my client. So there are a lot of options for how you apply this pressure. And while I'm talking about sinking with uh, this hand into the table, this is a great thing to do while you are using your forearm and elbow, which is another great option for working with a clothed client or any other client. Anything that I've talked about so far, you can easily do with your proximal forearm. And of course, you can always use petrissage here. Just realize that because you're not gliding, you are probably drawing up more tissue than you normally would if you had oil on your hands. So just be aware of that. And that's also another benefit to working with a clothed client or a draped client is, another, is a good way of simulating this. Just every time that I draw up this trapezius tissue, I'm drawing up an awful lot of it. It's not slipping through my grasp. So I'm not able to do that gliding sensation at the same time, but this is a great way of grabbing up a lot of fascia and a lot of muscle. And this is something that you can sit with and wait for that muscle to soften. And there are plenty of good opportunities for using deep friction here. And by deep friction, I mean moving the superficial tissue over the underlying tissue. Right now, I'm working with infraspinatus. And I'm just kind of doing a loop of the entire muscle. I'm following that inferior portion of the spine of the scapula outward, and then coming back to that infraspinous fossa and going back around. And because I can't really slide, I've got a good opportunity to pin these teres muscles against the lateral border of the scapula. When you're working with this clothed client, just remember some of the same principles that uh, I've talked about in past videos, and that's to return frequently to these broad integrating strokes to even though you can get very specific when you're doing this work because it's so easy to get into that um, deep friction uh, just be careful about kind of cutting the client up into little bits frequently go back to these broad applications of pressure 
and these walking moves that reintegrate these larger sections of the body. In fact, this cloth massage can be nice because when we don't have to worry about the drape, you can do more to integrate the entire body instead of just worrying about the upper body or just worrying about the lower body. You can work on both at the same time without having to be concerned about where the drape is or the drape moving, etc., etc. So you can work on the lower body as you work on the upper body. And just as an example of a few more things you can do, with certain areas of the body, you might like to give them a nice lift. So for working with this lower leg, I can, using a thumbless duck grip, so it looks like this, quack, quack, um, I can scoop up this calf tissue. And this is pretty easy on my joints. I'm not having to use my thumbs for anything at all. If that doesn't feel quite right for you, you can come to the side, angle yourself uh, toward the head, and use your palms to lift up this tissue. And you can bring some movement into it. This is a good opportunity to do moves that create some jostling of the body as you work. And you can continue that up into this upper leg. As you are lifting this tissue like this, again, try not to use your back as a crane. Try to get low in your stance and anchor yourself into your side or into your leg. Right now, I'm kind of lounging on my own leg. And now I can get over my client and lift up this posterior thigh tissue. And as I work with clothed clients, whether it's on a massage table or a massage chair, I always try to use the natural elasticity of their body to help me move. So right now, I'm sinking my body weight into her posterior thigh, and I'm bouncing back up. So I'm not having to use my back to stand up from this. I'm just able to gently rock without using pretty much any muscular effort. And just like with the back and with any other part of the body, you can choose to sink in and wait. I'm sinking my body weight down and then displacing the tissue up. So I'm creating a bit of fascial traction up toward this ischial tuberosity. And I'm just waiting. I'm allowing this hamstring region to soften I might feel it or I might not. In either case, these static moves can feel quite nice and it's something that uh, it's easy to forget about when you have oil on your hands. That sometimes you can just interact with these insertion sites and just hang out. A lot can be accomplished by sitting still. And the same thing working with this SI joint. You can, it's easier to make this contact and allow it to be static when there's some cloth in the way. And here I can sit here and wait. I can invite my client to take some easy deep breaths that change in the shape of the abdomen, can change the relationship of the lumbar spine and the sacrum. And I can make some changes just by gently rocking this leg. Or I can make bigger changes by plucking up this ankle and creating some motion. Now, if you're working with feet and the client has their socks on, just remember that you can sink in. I'm curling my fingers up toward my own palms and I'm just kind of compressing the foot. I'm just giving the foot a nice broad squeeze. And this is kind of the same principle as with the back. You can kind of travel up the foot with these big broad squeezes. Even if you can't glide, that's just fine. You can come up toward the toes and give them some individual attention.
you can scoop the calcaneus and give that a nice squeeze as you're working with those individual toes or as you're working with other areas of the foot. You can sink into the ankle and give that some of that deep friction. This can actually be a somewhat safer and gentler way of working with the top of the foot. Just gently mobilizing the skin on the top of the foot. This sock is kind of distributing my pressure a little bit and is keeping me from pulling on that skin too specifically. And if you would like to spend more time with this foot, you can always sink in with your fingertips. Think kind of a reflexology type feeling and explore the outer boundaries of this foot. Explore the arches, explore the ball of the foot. I'm using broad pressure with uh, my palm and specific pressure with my fingertips. I have never figured out a good way of getting a picture of this, so you'll have to imagine. And of course, if your client has chosen to remove their socks, you can ask them if you can use some lotion here and work with that normally. Now, I haven't been doing a lot of gliding so far, but that is definitely something that you can do. So if you choose to, you can uh, kind of wing your fingers out and use your palm to create some friction, some superficial friction uh, with these different areas of the thigh. This feels awfully nice along the IT band, unless there's extra sensitivity there. You can use the heel of your hand in this area lateral to the tibia. So that tibia is anterior and its friends. And once again, because I don't have that uh, glide happening, I can take some of this tissue and displace it when otherwise I might not be able to do that easily. So I can sink into this tibialis anterior region and kind of displace it outwards and downwards. That can feel awful nice. And this can be a good place to work for runners and pretty much everyone. Now for areas of exposed skin, you can, with your client's permission, use some oil. So I could do just pretty much my regular routine with her forearms and elbows and hands and neck. Some clients may be willing to undo a top button so that you can more easily access their neck. But uh, I say just work with what you've got. And uh, if there is cloth in the way, just think about what advantages that gives you as far as giving you that extra traction, uh, not having to deal with uh, the drape. Like this is a great time to work with the pecs and move the arm as you do so, because you don't have to worry about the drape shifting. All right, y'all, let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything that you do with clothed clients in the uh, comments. Uh, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.